Following months of preparation, engineering enhancements, and regulatory clearances, Starship Flight 9 aimed to accomplish what few experimental spacecraft ever dare, test the boundary between control and chaos. The SpaceX team had been working intensively on improvements after the previous flights, particularly around hot staging performance, engine reliability, and the critical re-entry phase. Engineers refined vehicle systems to boost the chance of success in key areas like payload deployment, booster reuse testing, and improved data collection from atmospheric re-entry. At T-10 seconds, the countdown had entered its final stretch. A low rumble began to swell. At T-0, all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster roared to life. The ground shook beneath the launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas. The sheer power of the liftoff sent shockwaves through the surrounding area, and at T plus 30 seconds, the vehicle was clearly visible, climbing rapidly into the morning sky. At T plus 40 seconds, the crowd marveled as the rocket arced overhead. It was an awe-inspiring sight. Spectators and engineers alike noted the significance. 33 out of 33 engines had ignited successfully, a full power liftoff marking a promising start for a vehicle historically prone to early-stage hiccups. The giant super-heavy booster, powering Starship on its back, surged skyward. By T plus one minute and six seconds, the vehicle approached the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, max Q, the moment when dynamic forces on the rocket are at their peak. Passing through max Q smoothly is essential. Moments later, the flight team confirmed everything was proceeding nominally, with stable chamber pressures across all engines. T plus one minute and 30 seconds brought a wave of anticipation. Hot staging. SpaceX's bold maneuver where Starship ignites while still attached to the booster was less than a minute away. This technique allows the upper stage to ignite and begin pulling away even before the booster completes full shutdown. Hot staging has been a signature focus of SpaceX's recent launch tests and is critical for future missions to orbit and beyond. At T plus 2 minutes and 10 seconds, the booster began shutting down all but its three center engines. This phase, referred to as most engines cutoff, was SpaceX's custom variant for Super Heavy. In a matter of seconds, the ship's own engines ignited. Six Raptors, three sea level and three vacuum optimized, came to life, pushing Starship away from the booster in a dazzling display of power and synchronization. At T plus two minutes and 52 seconds, stage separation occurred. The flip maneuver by the booster was smooth and controlled, SpaceX's first-ever directional flip. Meanwhile, Starship continued its ascent with six healthy engines blazing beneath it. Back at Mission Control in Hawthorne, engineers confirmed everything was nominal. The ship's path to space was underway. The booster, now flying solo, began its boost-back burn at T plus 3 minutes and 11 seconds using 13 of its engines. But unlike previous tests, SpaceX did not intend to recover this booster. Instead, the goal was to push it to its limits with a series of experiments, including a re-entry at a higher angle of attack. By T plus 3 minutes and 39 seconds, the boost back burn had concluded. The stage was set for a rapid descent over the Gulf of Mexico, telemetry remained nominal, and the avionic systems aboard Super Heavy relayed valuable data back to Earth. Engineers planned to test control under extreme aerodynamic forces, allowing the booster to pitch upward more aggressively, thereby increasing drag and data points for future controlled landings. Meanwhile, Starship soared higher. At T plus 4 minutes and 20 seconds, it was in the middle of its powered ascent, showing stable engine performance. By T plus 5 minutes, Super Heavy's descent began to accelerate. The team prepared to initiate a landing burn using 13 engines, which would quickly throttle down to three for the final seconds. At T plus five minutes and 43 seconds, the landing sequence commenced. The booster relit its engines for descent. But moments later, telemetry was lost. The team confirmed that the booster had demised essentially disintegrating or crashing before completing a full landing. However, this was expected. The booster was never meant to survive this flight. It had done its job. 
provide data during re-entry, and test a high-risk descent profile. Attention shifted fully to Starship. At T plus 7 minutes and 23 seconds, the ship neared the end of its burn. The final phase, engine shutdown, was now minutes away. Viewers were treated to spectacular onboard views, showcasing the three sea level and three vacuum raptors performing flawlessly. At T plus 8 minutes and 16 seconds, terminal guidance was called. Within 30 seconds, engines began shutting down in a staggered sequence. By T plus 9 minutes and 4 seconds, all engines were off, or second engine cutoff had been achieved. At this point, the focus turned to payload deployment testing. Starship carried a mock payload and a door mechanism that SpaceX hopes to use for future satellite deployments. At T plus 9 minutes and 18 seconds, engineers expected the payload door to open. However, it failed to actuate fully. A voice from Mission Control remarked, I'm sorry, Dan. Can't do that. The door would not be opening today. Still, the team noted that testing the door's mechanism in flight was a valuable step forward, even if full functionality wasn't achieved. Now in a suborbital trajectory, Starship continued to coast. But trouble was already brewing. By T plus 10 minutes and 30 seconds, signs of attitude control issues emerged. Engineers confirmed the vehicle had entered a slow spin. The loss of orientation control meant that the planned reignition of a single Raptor engine, intended to test relight capability in space, would be skipped. SpaceX had seen something similar on Flight 3. Though the cause was different, the outcome was the same. No control, no relight. As the ship drifted toward its re-entry path over the Indian Ocean, the focus shifted from performance to data collection. The vehicle's Starlink terminal continued to transmit live telemetry and camera views, allowing the team to extract every possible insight. By T plus 42 minutes, the light show had begun. Starship had started re-entry. With no attitude control, it tumbled into the atmosphere uncontrolled. Engineers had already taken a safety measure called passivation, venting unused propellants to reduce the risk of onboard explosions. The vehicle began to heat up rapidly. Temperatures exceeded 1,400 degrees Celsius as plasma engulfed the ship. On screen, viewers saw the glowing flaps, their edges beginning to deteriorate under the heat. One flap began to melt. The ship no longer aligned properly, exposed vulnerable surfaces to the searing forces of re-entry. This was the expected outcome. SpaceX had planned for this scenario and cleared vast swaths of the Indian Ocean. Even in failure, they were gaining precious knowledge. The vehicle had exceeded many expectations already. Full engine ignition, clean stage separation, six-engine operation, and an extended coast phase with partial payload testing. As telemetry faded and plasma consumed the Starship, it entered its final moments. It had not survived the re-entry, but it had succeeded in what mattered, pushing boundaries, validating models, and collecting real-world flight data.